Hello and welcome to Phuket Pulse GAD Express Screencast with me, Digital Marky. Today's lesson focuses on part 8 of my discussion for GAD Science under Chemistry. So our topic for today is all about introduction to chemical reactions and balancing. At the end of the discussion, every one of you is expected to identify effects of chemical reactions and balance chemical equations following the law of conservation of energy. Now, in recognizing chemical reaction, a chemical reaction is mainly a process in which one or more substances are changed into new substances. So, new simply means substance that were not there before the reaction. So, you have sets of reactants combined together or fused together to produce a new product. Now, a chemical equation like what was discussed before in my previous videos, is a, chemi um, is a symbolic representation that can explain or that can summarize a chemical reaction since a chemical reaction cannot be seen and it occurs on a submicroscopic level. We can make use of chemical equations to represent them. Now, a chemical equation is a written expression that illustrates what happens during a chemical reaction. And all chemical equations have three basic parts. You have the reactants and the products. Or reactants is defined as one or more substances that enter the reaction and is separated by a plus sign. And you have here this arrow, which is called a yield sign. It means like an equal sign in a math equation that means something is being produced for the product side the one on your right that would be one or more new substances that are formed during the reaction separated by plus signs now the type of equations we have a formula equations these are written using the chemical symbols and formulas for a substance for example mg plus s mg is magnesium plus sulfur will yield magnesium sulfide. And we have work equation. These are written using the names of the elements and compounds involved. Examples are potassium oxygen will give you potassium oxide. Now equations must always be balanced because it follows the law of conservation of matter or law of conservation of energy, which says that matter cannot be made or destroyed. And like what I'm usually mentioning, a chemical equation illustrates what happens to atoms on some microscopic level. And it must show exactly what happens to all atoms involved. And when you say law of conservation of energy or law of conservation of matter, it says that matter can neither be created nor destroyed. It only transforms from one form to another. Now, for that record, we have here this. Because of this law, we must write balance equations. And these are equations that is or that have the same number of each atom on both sides of that equation. Now, for example, we consider sodium and chloride. That will give you NaCl. If we're going to count this subscript in here there are two chlorine and one atom of sodium but on the product side there there is only one chlorine and there is only one sodium so in order for us to balance that we need to consider the number of atoms present on the reaction since there are one sodium and two chlorine atoms on the reactive side, but only one sodium and one chlorine on the product side. This is not balance. Now, in balancing an equation, we can only add numbers before the formula, so adjust the number of atoms on each side, and we cannot change subscripts. These numbers are known as coefficients based on what I have discussed under chemical equation in my previous videos. So coefficients is multiplied 
by the number of each kind of an atom in a formula. Now let's try to balance our equation. For example, we have sodium plus 2 or chlorine will give you NaCl. We count the number of each atom on both sides. So there is only one sodium atom and two Cl atoms on the left side, but there is one sodium atom and one chlorine atom on the right side. So we start with the first unbalanced atom and try adding a coefficient to balance it. So we can put two. In this case, we have two sodium on our right and two chlorine on our right since we are just multiplying it. Two times one and two times one. Now, in this case, there are two sodium, but the one on your left has only one. So the only way for you to make them equal is to write a number or a coefficient, which is two, so that there would be equal number of sodium from your left to your right. Now, continue adding coefficients as needed until all atoms are balanced in number on both sides. So, there are two chlorines on your reactant side, and 2 times 1 is 2. That means there are two chlorine atoms on your product side. Now, how do you know when a chemical reaction has occurred? There are several factors that identify a chemical reaction. It could be energy is given off as heat or light, such as burning or an explosion, or a gas is being formed. It could be a precipitate, wherein it forms a solid that settles to the bottom, or there is a change in color or order, which indicates that there is a chemical reaction. But not always, because it can be physical. Now, since you already have an understanding about chemical reaction involving balancing, let's try this. Can you try balancing it? So in this case, how many potassium can you say? There's only one. And there are two oxygen. But in this side, you have two potassium and there's only one oxygen. So the equation is unbalanced. In this case, we have aluminum plus sulfur that will give you aluminum sulfide. sulfate. I mean sulfide. So aluminum is one, sulfur is one, but on this product side, you have two aluminum and three sulfur. And next we have carbon and chlorine, which yields carbon tetrachloride. So we have here one carbon and four chlorine. You can pause the video for a while and answer with on your end on a separate sheet. So the answer for that would be this one. You can check your answer based from this. So it should be 4 potassium, 4, and on this side you write 2, so 2 times 2 that is 4. So there are 4 potassium and 4 potassium, that makes them equal. Oxygen on the other side is 2 times 1, that is 2, and this one is 2, that makes them equal. So the equation is now balanced. How about aluminum and so forth? You write 2 and you write 3 in here. On this case, 2 times 1 is 2. That means there are 2 aluminum in the reactant side. And on this product side, you have 2 aluminum. On this side, you have 3 sulfur. And on this case, you have 3, which is the subscript here on the product side. That means there are 3 sulfur, which makes them equal. On this last equation you have one carbon on the reactant side and you have one carbon on the product side now for chlorine you just multiply two times two or you put two over here so that there would be four chlorine on the reactant side because on the product side there are four of it that makes them balance great job everyone and congratulations for reaching this part thank you so much for watching and for the references that i have used you can Read in advanced Cambridge Chemistry 3rd edition or visit ck12.org. Physical Science under Middle School. That ends my video for today. And if you find it useful, you can give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Since you already here, you might as well subscribe to our channel. 
or if you want to connect with us you can visit www.phuketpulse.org or visit us at our website at facebook.com slash phuketpulse if you have questions or inquiries regarding our organization you can give us a message through line or give us a call at 0814170978 thank you so much and have a great day everyone i'll see you in my next screencast bye